No council had ever achieved so much, says historian Jean Combe about the Great Council of Trent. The Catholic Church was reeling. The Protestant Reformation had seen the loss of huge numbers of adherents. Around 40% of the church was now Protestant. Add to this the fact that clear abuses of church power had been revealed, and the theology of justification, how we get to heaven, had been questioned. Some heads of major orders like the Capuchins abandoned ship and crossed to the Protestant side. Wars between Protestants and between Protestants and Catholics threatened to tear Europe apart. It's fair to say that the aftermath of the Protestant Reformation was a rough time for the Catholic Church. Combe tells us that the whole world was shouting for a council, and that's exactly what Pope Paul III decided to do. It was called in Trento, Italy, near the border of Protestant territories, in the hope that the Protestants would attend, and that we might mop up all of this Reformation business once and for all. When they heard they were not to be given voting rights, the Protestants boycotted. Maybe fair. A few actually did turn up in the last session, but didn't agree to much. This thing was a whopper of a council. It took three sittings, 1545 to 47, 1551 to 52, and finally 1562 to 63. There were two kinds of decisions at the council, those born out of long reflection on matters of theology, and those that seemed a little more intent on punishing Protestants and preventing future schisms. In fact, one of the favourite words of the council was, anathematized, which means we declare you heretic or completely wrong. Let's run through some of the highlights. On the Mass, the great variety of liturgies were brought together in one official Latin Mass, for unity and for uniformity. Anyone advocating for the Mass in local languages is anathematized. On Scripture versus Tradition, well both. Scripture is the Word of God, and Tradition is the valid interpreter of this word. Anyone saying one without the other is anathematized. On justification. So do we get to heaven because of faith alone or because of our works? Both. We're justified by grace and faith, which moves us to perform good works. Anyone saying it's one without the other is, you got it, anathematized. On sacraments, seven. There are seven. These pesky Protestants with their two, anathematized. On the real presence, yeah, Jesus is there in the Eucharist and that requires a priest to make it happen. On founding seminaries, priests needed proper training, so each diocese was required to found a seminary for training them. We really must avoid having incompetent priests, which was one of the problems in the first place. So it was a long council, and a productive one, and that sorted that whole Protestant Reformation thing out once and for all. Except it didn't really. Yes, the key abuses of church power were addressed, and the confusions in doctrine clarified, but 500 years of poisoned relationships, war, and repression from and to the Protestants ensued.